So I have a couple of specific questions from people about addressing, um, and they, there's two that sort of go together, and it would be helpful if you could give us your thoughts on that. So one here is, um, should the local language be used on the direct mail piece? It depends. <laughs> I, I'm going to the same answer, it depends. Um, you know, I would say that I would not translate a street address into English. I would not translate a city, state, a city or a province into English. Um, you know, I, if we translate one of our addresses into another language and try to mail that from whatever, you know, if I translate my address into Spanish and try to mail it into the United States from Spain, some clerk is going to get this and just stare at it for quite a while because it's not <laughs> going to make sense. They're not going to be able to read the address. You have to realize that the system assumes, the electronic systems where they exist, assume that the address is written in country language. That's what the database is going to be in, the postal database. The clerks will only read mostly the local language. So your delivery person, everybody that's handling this can't read it if it's translated. Uh, Mary, would you, you want to make a distinction between local language and local characters? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the next question. But before we get there, you're focusing on the uh, physical aspect of delivery as it relates to whether you use local language or English. Um, if it's a direct mail piece, what, what are the implications of doing it in relationship to the response rate? Do you get a different response rate when you're using a local language versus not doing so? Am I getting I, another it depends? I, I think you are <laughs> going to get another it depends, unfortunately. I, I think it, uh, one of the variables is, is the market or the organization trying to present themselves as a local organization. So if they have a call center and are able to take calls locally, if they're able to handle those calls in the local language, then maybe putting München instead of Munich is fine because you're able to deal in, in German with that response. But if you're clearly a US organization marketing into a foreign country, in this case Germany, uh, perhaps it's, it's better, and again, it depends, but to uh, be in English. Um. Well, uh, Jody, I think one of the other variables is, is the local culture. I've read studies that show very clearly that l different cultures respond to different triggers differently. Whether they're Hispanic or Portuguese or, or Asian, different, different, tr different triggers, they'll be triggered by different appearances on the, on the direct mail piece. Very good point, thank you. L local expertise can be beaten to have feet on the streets that know that uh, culture, that market. Yeah. And of course, in some countries, there's a greater familiarity with English yes. than there might be in others. So I think what we're all saying is it depends. It depends on the country. <laughs> it depends on the company mailing. It depends on whether it's marketing or transactional and whether there's telemarketing support. Got it. So the, the sort of in more in-depth follow-up question as it relates to that is, does using Roman characters in Russia make delivery harder than using Cyrillic characters? So it's a very specific question. The simple answer is yes. As soon as you've put it into Latin Western characters, it gets stopped at the beginning of the process. It gets a label put on it with a Cyrillic address. So if you want your piece to look as you sent it, it should be in Cyrillic. They will put an, a label over it with the Cyrillic address because, again, that local delivery agent can't read. Okay, bottom line, if you're mailing to Russia, you're better off using Cyrillic. Is there another country like that? Um, a oh few. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Greece, uh, Japan, which has great delivery of Western addresses. Absolutely fantastic delivery time on Western addresses. Hand processes every address that comes in not written in Japanese. Wow. They stop it. It gets done by hand because people can't read it. They need somebody to translate the address. And that happens in a lot of other countries. On the other hand, that whole chain we talked about before with capture and storage and printing. Mm -hmm. becomes much more problematic if you're looking at all of the how many different character sets oh, yes. around the world. Um, <laughs> you know that number, Barney? 
<laughs> uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I could guess. No, okay, we'll take a guess. We're looking at more than 50. Yeah. In, in terms of international distribution, the Postal Service deals with that question in, 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 a, in a several different ways. Um, if it's, uh, we, we have some international services that are geared for you know, volume customers, bulk mailers, for example. Mm -hmm. And then of course we'll have the, the individual uh, letter or sure, package that can mail. be sent. Okay. So um, if uh, it is a single piece, individual package, mm -hmm. okay, um, the Postal Service uh, says that the uh, country name, at least, uh, should be in English, and the city name should also be in English. And the reason for that is because it first has to be handled and processed in our system. So if the entire address was in Cyrillic or in kanji, um, when it gets in our system, our personnel would not know what to do with it. So for that reason, the Postal Service says at least you know, the city and the country name so that we can sort it properly to right. get it to that country. Then when it gets to that country, if, if you know, the name and the street were in you know, Cyrillic, then they could obviously deal with it you know, at, at that level. For our volume services, bulk services, particularly the um, International Priority Airmail and the International Surface Airlift, IP and ISO, which are used extensively by direct marketers, okay, um, we, we, we start off by saying the same thing. But we have um, certain provisions with those bulk services where if customers, uh, because they're required to do some sortation on them, um, if all of the mail pieces to France are presented in the same bag. Yes. Okay. Makes so, it a lot easier. Yeah, because we're not opening, the, the U.S. Postal Service is not, is not opening that bag or that mm -hmm. tray. We're going to just move the whole, you know, transport the whole sack sure. to France. So in that case, we say um, it is not necessary to have fr the France, the country name in English, or the oh, city name in English. Oh, that's an advantage for bulk right. mailers. Right. So, so in that case, you can have the entire address in uh, Cyrillic or Japanese or you know whatever language, because the postal service is not you know, reading or processing because we're just moving the whole bag of mail intact. Sure. So that works really nicely for when you want to do that direct mail campaign where you really want to have that you know everything in, in in that local language. Absolutely. So we have options for for different customers. Great. Um, I'm assuming that uh, this experience that we have is kind of taking off with e-commerce e taking off. And I don't know if there's different tips and tricks that you might give to e-commerce and to parcel shippers that might be different than folks that are doing letters or magazines or catalogs. One of the, again, it's beginning with the uh, end in mind is, is that you want that to be a usable address. So one of the most important things is that you're capturing uh, specific to the individual's country that, as Barry pointed out, that the, the uh, postal code is in the right place that you say postal code instead of zip on that form because they may not be familiar with the right. term zip. So speak in their language even in the arrangement of that form and the naming of those fields in that form. So dynamic capture at a country specific level is a great way of uh, assuring that you're capturing the right data points. And when you're dealing with parcels, you're not just dealing with the postal service. One of the big problems with parcel shipment is that there are a lot of more security requirements. I mean, the post office works with the customs organizations regularly, uh, but sometimes the parcel gets held up because of customs issues on the other end or security issues somewhere in the chain having nothing to do with the postal processing itself. So parcels need a very correct address so that they don't get held up in that process. And, and Mark explained to us that doesn't always happen. So can you elaborate? <laughs> well, like, like we were talking before, when the e-commerce companies rely on the end user, the customer, to fill in a name and address in a web template, very often they're, they're, they either make mistakes and don't, they don't get it right, or the web template doesn't allow for enough fields or characters to put all the information in there that they need. So that, that be, it can become a real problem. I think that there are some pretty good 
software solutions out there now for e-commerce shippers that do accommodate some of that, and they actually will do some correction on the fly, but they're, you, know, you, you really need to, to pay attention to that very closely, more so for parcels than mail, because you're shipping something that has value. And, and unless you're sending it via a trackable service, the chances of it getting lost are, are very real. And if it gets lost, you're out that money. It's not, it's not going to come back. Well, in how many countries can you actually track a parcel? Well, depending on how you ship. Um, the USPS has, has a couple services that track very well. The priority Mail International tracks. Pri pri Priority Mail Express, Inter International Express. Yeah, it's Priority, Priority Mail Express International. Right. They changed, they changed the name yeah. a couple times, but but that <laughs> tracks. And then uh, for some of the bulk services, uh, ePacket is a is an IPA service that tracks to I think 17 countries now. Beyond that, then there are private couriers, there are private postal administration. So there are a lot of different options exist where you can get trackable services if you're willing to pay for it. And of course, one other thing between letter type mail and packages is that you do have a customs form. Um, if you're just sending a letter, you don't need a customs form, but if you have a package with a widget in it, you do need a customs form, and it's important that um, the, the mailer uh, accurately declare uh, you know, the contents and the value uh, on, on the customs form. And of course, uh, well, of course, there are a lot of integrated uh, labels now where the, the customs form also serves as, as the address label, but there again you go back to the make sure that the, the address is, is, is accurate and then of course that you have declared the contents uh, accurately.